Welcome to episode 80. Is it 89 or 90? It's actually episode 90 of Tactical Crouch. I'm Kick Tripod, joined of course by uh, Yiska and Volamel. Preview show. I love preview shows. They're fun. Hell uh, yeah. We've uh, got a ton of Overwatch to talk about and a, um, I don't know, just a lot to, lot to do. It's been an eventful week. Um, we're not going to do too much housekeeping, uh, except for three things. Number one, if you are into Valorant at all and want to follow us over there Friday at noon Pacific time, twitch.tv slash kick tripod. We're going to be recording episode one of spike drop. Do come hang out, uh, with us. And if you have any questions, uh, tweet us at spike drop on Twitter or, uh, just tweet any one of us individually and, uh, we'll try to you know, kind of keep it open to that. And especially in the beginning as everybody's kind of figuring things out. Also, if you like the show, go to patreon.com slash tactical crouch. We're going to be doing a game night here soon. We haven't discussed it. So we'll know next Monday uh, when the game night's going to be, um, should be a ton of fun. And we'll try to give you more time. I think the one thing that we've done a really poor job of is letting people know ahead of time when we're doing the game night, it'll be like Mm -hmm. on Wednesday and the game nights on Friday. So we're not going to do it to you this month. This I promise. So, yep. Uh, and follow us on Twitter at tactical underscore crouch. And oh yeah, this is actually really important. We've moved the show live show times to noon Pacific time, Monday, Wednesday, for Overwatch and Friday for Valorant. So, make sure to uh, come tune in there. Twitch.tv slash kick tripod again. That's it. Let's go into the news. A uh, big thank you to Battle Crab, Pin, Lulshin, Charlie L, Audio Compass, Pork Chop, Sammy, Kasha67, Coochie Kopi, Salsa Boy91, and Shara. Appreciate you all. Our patron producers are awesome. Um, really appreciate your support of the show. Uh, it's, uh, it's really nice when you have support from uh, your, your uh, fans and then... Uh, you know, you have a nice little tier two set up there. Our our patron producers are like our tier two, but not tier two Overwatch. The Toronto Defiant have dropped their academy team, Montreal Rebellion. That was not the best segue, by the way. I'm sorry. I was, was a little, I was a little scared. Ah, I'm like, I don't know. Sorry, I, don't know. I was all, I was saying all of that for the segue. Ah, I got gotcha, you. Gotcha. Everything I said was a segue. It's like tier two in the way that we love it. We we love and appreciate tier two and we support them and they support us and you know we have a we have a strong relationship. Um it's they're not tier two in the way that it is on fire and all the teams are leaving. So um definitely we, not. we support yeah. our tier two. Tier two tactical crouchers Game are night. highest caliber of people, as we know. Higher than us, actually. We might be tier 100%, two. One hundred percent. We easily. might be tier two in our own community. Oh, tier three. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I might be open, open division. division. You might be, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm open to vision. You might be. Some of the things I've said, I might be, you know, monthly melee, weeklies type person. <laughs> just grinding out those weekly. I might eh? just be a ladder hero stuck in plat that thinks I'm a GM player. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm that guy. The diamond guy who should be GM. If it I'm the guy his, who insta-locks if it, Tracer. If it wasn't for his teammates, right? Yes. If it wasn't for my teammates in this god-awful meta. Joe is... Was- Pugs. <laughs> I might be collegiate. Yeah, that's a great point. Oh man. Anyways, uh Montreal Rebellion uh have been dropped by the Toronto Defiant. We don't have a ton of info on it other than um COVID nineteen has made it even yeah. more sustain unsustainable, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Which sucks on the timing of it all. Like it, it sucks regardless, mm-hmm. but like the timing of it is not like these guys can like turn around and go outside and start applying for jobs. Um, yeah, it's also like just like if you look at the, how they, those events transpired, they were signed pretty recently, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, then um, it was reported, for instance, that Overactive Media, so the parent company of Toronto Defined, had to go let go of I believe thirteen people. Don't hold me to that. So that's a that's a Rona 
uh, cut, right? Like that's yeah. we can safely say they planned for an academy team, then mm-hmm. this had, and then that's that's just I, I feel a little bit bad, especially for uh, Numlocked, yeah, uh, who I interviewed um, not that long ago. Who I a, a player who I firmly believe is still like has shown Overwatch League level play last season. Very resilient and yeah. um, honestly could be a starter on quite some teams. I think. Um, yeah, I'd say so. And was, I mean, I I we don't know that for sure, but it always felt like he was one of those guys that were suffering from uh, the perception of age. In the scene 100%. and yep. wanting to rather like even if Namlok now was a better player or had proven to be a better player last year, then people still counted on younger talent, which like that's their roster strategy, so fair enough. Um just felt sad because in his in his career he's never deserved it more, I think. He was never a better player than he was with Hurricane with uh yep. Envy. Mm-hmm. And um I think he could have uh, he could have delivered solidly for an Overwatch League team, especially you know like the you know the the Toronto Defiance of the world. That was also my hope that there maybe oh, I think a lot of people like, were two, planning on that. Yeah, yep. yeah, two way contract situation eventually developing, where whenever Beast has a um, has a problem, young player, a lot of volatility, you maybe want uh, a second main tank to grind a specific. Um, Hero, like those are the scenarios where I see Numlock coming in, and uh, he also had a cracked ball. Like, oh, really? For those, yeah, yeah, for those nice. who followed Montreal, like really good ball. So that's uh, in my mind, I was already making like these connections and had high hopes for him. Unfortunate, but um, yeah, it's uh, thankfully opportunities are out there now for people who are you know wanting to compete. Yep, and I think, um, um, I think Numlock too could be one of those players who actually could be really successful as a like a, a strategic or a player coach. Yeah, um, he's got the experience yeah. on it. Um, he definitely, I think, I don't know how old is Numlock. If I remember correctly, he's not young. No, he's not um, very young, but he's wait. I'm he's not cool, is Matt. 27. 27, yeah. So he is, you know, he, he's January getting up there too. So he did say he's going to be streaming some Valorant, but he's open to, to both player and coaching positions in Overwatch. So I don't know. I yeah. think I, uh, I think it would be, I would like to see him in that role. I think that that would be something that he could do well. Not that I mm-hmm. don't want to see him as a player, but man. Yeah. I think once you're 27, you have to really kind of start like thinking like, okay, what's my next step? In esports, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know, uh, hoping that they stay in esports, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and for those who did ask, so there was a couple of people who asked, uh, "What about Mangachu and Roki, who are both uh, two wave players? They joined the Defiant full time, so uh, they're going to be on the Defiant roster now. They're not part of uh, what was let go." Yeah, yeah you can't so. let go, Roki. That that'd be that'd be a death now. That's when you know things Precious. are going belly up. Is if Roki goes. We got things to worry about. Too precious. No, like, um, I of course it's hard for him then to work mm. on that, um, on that team. Even though they have grief, of course. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the situation with living accommodations is, because um, that that's a big question at the moment, right? Like, oh if they yeah, ha- that's a good point. But, by the way, I know nothing uh, of this. But for instance, let's say one of these academy teams had a team house. And then their two-way players don't have a team house anymore because mm-hmm. it can't be rented anymore. How do you move them at the moment? Yeah, that's a that's an interesting question. Also, of course, applies to wait. Did did Atlanta have two-way players? Uh, they have at some point. Like season? Gator no. was, yeah, not this season. Gator and but Gator was, last season, yeah, yeah. But Kodak this season I think was for a little bit. I think they might have season, also let go of this team before yeah. uh, before it even became a, a problem with. Corona, but yeah, th- these are just like considerations that you didn't think you had have to do, mm-hmm. and now you do. And um, yeah, fair enough. Like that's that's how the cookie crumbles. And uh, I mean, also other um, 
other interesting players uh, on that team. Um, but we'll see how how this develops. Um, there's still Overwatch being played, and uh, we'll see. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I um. It's we're sad, we're but... watching tier two closely right now, right? I mean, it's it's no it's no secret that tier two needs a lot of love. We've lost a lot of great players and coaches this past week, and. Mm -hmm. that hurts our hearts i think a little bit right um we're bummed about it but um you know we'll we'll see what happens hopefully hopefully things turn around you know coronavirus we have to kind of remember this is just kind of a moment in time um and there is a future where all of this hopefully goes back to by normal we mean you know people can start going to work again uh, people can start going to sporting events again. There's a world where that happens. And um, from there, we'll kind of see what Tier 2 Overwatch has in store. Um, other than that, though, I don't think really anything in the news, guys, right? No, not really. Um, not that mm, I saw. Least. No, 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 I don't no, think so. I don't so. think so. been pretty quiet, which is not a bad thing. Not a horrible thing. It it's isn't, yeah. So let's Just talk. Uh, to look to. Let's let's talk about this coming week then. Let's preview week ten. Can you believe it? We're in week ten. Yeah. Uh, with no, it feels yeah. like we should be deeper in the season, but part of me also feels it feels like this is week twenty, and other parts yeah. it's like this is week five. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We actually only had like six weeks of active playing, right? Uh, yeah, they missed two weeks and then just continued um, counting. So yeah. technically, I think this is like week. Yeah. Wait, how many Eight-ish? games does the the, the the most the most one seven right? um is uh, I believe seven six and one Philadelphia Fusion no eight yeah. sorry Washington Justice Houston Outlaws oh, yeah. have both played eight oh yeah eight um and Out then on the on the Pacific side no one's played more than uh, everybody has played four or less except for the Valiant who have played six yeah. Nothing is decided yet. Uh, it's still very early in the season, even though it doesn't feel like that, right? But I will say I do hope they they rework and retool like the midseason tournament for next season because I think people were like really excited and excited about, about that. It. I yeah, honestly same. wish we would just have midseason tournaments four times a season. So stages. Just, just yeah, so do stages, <laughs> but like more of a tournament yeah, yeah. format for the stages 100%. rather than like three teams play for... Mm. I hope I hope that feeling got to Overwatch League brass because people were genuinely jazzed about it and I hope yeah, they super like are a little bit more bold like they've been bold with hero pools again you know we, we've talked about it on the show on, on how we feel but I think it would be a resounding success if they did like a reintroduction of the stage format but without like the kind of meaningless like regular season thing, but just more tournaments, like you said, like four tournaments throughout the season, weigh them somehow. It doesn't have to be prize money in particular, but I think people would really, really enjoy that. Double elimination, six man. I, I think one of the big criticisms of the mid season tournament, um, as it stood at the beginning of the season in 2020, was that it was only four teams, I believe. It was two of the highest performing and then the Atlantic and Pacific uh, division leaders. Which right. it feels a little shallow, but six man double elimination four times a year, and then we lead into a grand finals. I I think right. a lot of my gripes would go away personally. Yeah, we'll just have to see. I think uh, it, it's really difficult to find, you know, and there's this constant balance going on of um, figuring out what works in traditional For sports, sure. what works in esports, and what works in both. Right? That's yep. I mean, really, that's what the first three years of overwatch league have been about and a lot of times as far as the format concern is concerned is like what works what doesn't um mm. i think uh we'll just have to see i guess i don't know we'll um we'll watch it we'll see it'll be an interesting year 2021 20, we're already kind of checking thing, out on 2020 right? like, this was supposed to be the man i yeah. don't know it was supposed to be an yeah. exciting year, and it's an exciting I mean, year for the still, wrong reasons. Uh, it's still like fun Overwatch. Yeah. I've had some of the most fun watching Overwatch I've had, I think, in a long time. But the fan in me agrees with you. Like it, it has been different 
Dude, um, I'm when definitely I've got, less. When I've got Torbjorn splooging all <laughs> over points. I am happy. Okay, Care I should qualify must that. Must be hilarious. Jesus. They oh must yeah, they, be, they're they like that. The, the audio must be ridiculous. unusable. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we uh, don't get no comms chat. That's no, the real reason why guys. we don't get any more comms chat. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and it's no just way. filled with uh, <laughs> yeah nonsense, just absolute debauchery. Can, can, can we can we go there? Can I tell a, an anecdote of a team that I know? Can we go there for like? Can we just like yes. not care? Sh in should this I episode about the filter? Do you want okay. me to? So, so <laughs> one team <laughs> said like their comms are basically like in the torp manner. It's just like uh, push, push. Oh, we can't push. There's too much nut on the ground. Oh, I can't tell my nut from the other nut. <laughs> this is. <laughs> This is cum swapping. <laughs> so you stole. Oh my God. You yoinked all of that humor from yes. an Overwatch League. Jesus. Yes. Plagiarism. Like. Can you tell us. Uh, I'm not saying. Uh, no. Every team. Atlantic every or team. Pacific? Most teams. Um. I cannot do believe it. you put Don't me in that situation <laughs> to say it because there's no clear answer. So it's a Texan team. <laughs> All right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just cannot answer. I mean, every, everyone, everyone uh, does that. To be stuff, fair, there's not right? like one team that's like, uh, I, what, yeah, what yeah, is yeah. it even called? Molten Core? Is it still called Molten Core? Out the ability, yeah. I, don't I don't even know what it's called. Anymore. So let me look. I'll look. I don't know. Sounds hot. Though. Chat says yes. Uh, so if it's called molten core, it's like I'm molten coring everywhere. I can't control my molten core. E is overload. Ah. Oh, that's yeah. His E is his overload. I thought I thought they moved molten core to E and then changed the salt. My apologies. Got it. So E is overload. Molten core is um, his alt. And yeah, molten core. I can't tell his molten core from. It's just not easy to say. Yeah, it's just not. Also, you wouldn't believe how many phallic objects in Overwatch map positions are called dildo by every yep. team. It's it's nuts. Like it's yep. just <laughs> these comps, these comps, uh, the comps check guys are just like cutting around the five seconds where nobody say, says a swear word and hope that there's something funny in there. Otherwise, comps are completely unusable. Say, like it's, it, and that's why we don't get match pet chat. <laughs> that's why yep. it, yes, it's that, all pre yeah. and post. And that's why nobody else blinked an eye when they saw the word sex in match chat. So, yep. uh, yeah. Fair enough. Um, all right. Let's talk about the meta a little bit. Uh, we do have hero bands coming up this week, uh, like we do every week. And it is Sombra, Reaper, Diva, and Ana. Big ones. Big ones. We lost the main last week. Uh, Joe, you're the eternal meta reader of all time. Um, given these bands here, or sorry, these new hero pools, uh, uh -huh. what, what do you see in your crystal ball? What are you running in the... The Volamel Velociraptors. Oh, no. Um, I think it's probably a lot of double shield in some way. Mm -hmm. um, whether that be Sigma Orisa or Rhine Orisa or maybe even some Rhine Sigma. Um, I think that is going to be the core that's played around with. That could mean Tracer. It's it seems like Tracer Brigitte are still in. I uh, again, if if I'm understanding you know bands correctly, I believe Tracer is back with her partner in crime with Brigitte. So that's a very strong duo. I think you're going to see a lot of teams refer back to older archetypes, um, especially with ones that have recently been played because you're you're still keeping that practice time somewhat intact even though like nuances like some nuance is gone but for the most part you're still getting some sort of practice on those heroes and and you're still a little bit more fresh so i could see ryan like ryan sigma tracer brig type of compositions and then fill in the blank depending on the map stuff like that i think those four heroes are kind of a core yes i know that you uh are a little bit more plugged in 
Um, oh, how? I didn't actually get to ask people this uh, this time around. It, it was it was interesting to see just how, how different it still is in these different yeah. uh, scenes. And um, yeah, so like, I th I think the the idea that we're going to that's the th the interesting thing is okay. Let's think back. Okay. There definitely have been bands where the original meta that was working pre-hero pools mm -hmm. or we being played was playable but but wasn't played. then played right because we banned counters towards comps that then beat you know ice skates or whatever you want to call it like okay sure may um agree um i think Banning Sombra is always interesting with ball um, iterations. I don't think that will be a widespread thing. I definitely think that opens Chengdu doors, though. It certainly could. Uh, <laughs> um, now, what do you dive with that? Do you just go Winston? Or do you go the, that's the that's ball, the thing. ball Zarya Doom stuff that Shock was... I think that's that's open. I that's the thing with Chengdu is it's it's hard to really put a vote or put a bet on what they might do because again, like look what they ran last week. Everybody's running like Rhine Diva compositions and they come out with Sigarisa and Soldier. It's just like, huh? And it worked. Yeah. It worked pretty good. And then some of the other, you know, Asian teams actually mirrored them. I remember on Hanamura in particular, I think it was Guangzhou that was just like okay, I guess we're just going to play this into you. I don't know why I'm doing this, but it's better than trying something else. I might as well mirror you and try to decipher this as the match goes on because it seems like a composition you're pretty comfortable with. And we saw Chung do return to that a quite, quite a few times. So I don't know what they're going to do. Um, I think you'd be a foolish man to try and put a bet on what they would do. I think Wrecking Ball being open definitely helps them. Um, it definitely unlocks part of Chengdu their roster. Helps Chung do. Yes, I think um, for 18, it, it's going to be difficult to kind of build a composition around that. I do think, like you said, Ball Balzaria with some sort of dive archetype could work. I also wouldn't be shocked to see them, I don't know, like play like a solo ball and then like some sort of weird death ball like comp, if that makes sense. Like no pun intended, whereas like ball and like a flanker and then the four just kind of like run at them and then a dive happens where it's mm. it anything's dive to Chengdu. It's probably just going to be very aggressive. I wouldn't be surprised to see more uh, Jinmu Fara if that's the case. Mm. Um, but yeah, this it again. They're a team that's built for this. Like they they can do. They'll find a way to be successful in this this meta game. So I I just don't know what that is going to be. I also think it's interesting, like because I I mentioned these. Um... The, these mechanics where it's like the existence of another hero keeps some something out of the meta because the application of hard counter is so easily executable that you just don't play that character in order to or, or most of the time mm. this is functionally probably the or mm, no it's not functionally the only time that we couldn't feasibly pick diva in uh in the last couple of years like playoffs was pretty much like this right like um we could have picked her but we didn't but other than that like we've had this idea of diva being you know like a bullshit filter for a lot of comps and being the checks and balances to overwatch for a long time yeah. and i wonder if that could mean just like more farah um for instance for more more people with specialists i'm looking at shanghai also on top of yes. uh, of uh, Chengdu. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see, uh, like, I'm, I'm struck again, like early in the week, I thought I had a good idea. Then you hear the first initial tryouts and it's like, okay, a at the end of the day, probably around Thursday, Friday, we'll have a get better idea what teams are generally running in both regions or three regions more, more so. Yeah. And, um, we'll see how that develops, uh, in, in the meta compositions, but it was also still pretty interesting that, for instance, Defiant ran a more Asian style, right? In the sense that they played, if I recall correctly, played a lot of uh, Sombra Reaper. 
and mm, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. not as yeah. much Tracer or these Torp comps. Yep. And if is that just like you know independent creation, or did they have like connections to the Asian teams, or and that could determine also what these types of teams play next week. Where does same separation come from, or was that just a coincidence? What's in, and I'm not trying to put this on Defiant, even though I think it's definitely a possibility. What is it? Um, linear thinking or parallel thinking, where you you come to a similar conclusion, like completely devoid of one another. Like the, what I'm saying is that like the Toronto Defiant might not have been inspired, but they came to the same conclusion that the Asian teams did, even though they were probably scrimming against Torp, right? Mm -hmm. So they they met in the same they they finished they came to the same finish line coming to the same different conclusion ways. from different yeah pa it's like it, in math I, I remember in math there was a couple of times where i got the right answer with the wrong <laughs> with the wrong work i did the wrong work and like yeah. they're like how did you get this answer and they thought i cheated and i'm just an idiot <laughs> i need a term from yiska on that though is there not a term for that that feels like a like know. a math psychological term that you should know yeah i I was I was hoping that he would come to my rescue, but alas, mm, no, nothing comes up. Parallel thinking, no. okay. La well, lateral thinking, or lateral thinking, maybe I don't know, maybe something yeah. thinking, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. regardless. I think it might be. By the way, someone who's good at that is uh, reportedly Mangachu. Just isn't thinking linearly, mm -hmm. straight ahead, but like. What else dumb shit could we do here? Right. right? Well, like, there's also, like, we see it a lot with players, too, right? Where um, I think we had this conversation, like, a month or so back about players who uh, come to the proper conclusion, but either do so much thinking subconsciously that it's just, like, it's, like, a spidey sense, right? Yeah. I think it was Sinatra, right? Yeah, um, just go doom. Ha -ha. Yeah, and then we go back and, like, I actually show the work, and that's right. Um you know, it feels like one of those situations, too. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of players probably have a hard time putting exactly. I think there are some players who do a really good job at, like, explaining how they came to that thought process. But there are a lot of players. It's like that that new meme format where it's just like, haha, symmetrical Burt. Just like they just they just think it's it's fun and they don't know why it's good, but it seems to be working. So why not keep doing it? So I cannot believe you just you sent me. That just that's that's that just, that's internal me is just like haha torb go burt <laughs> oh man yeah yep. haha zerglings go attack so um before we get into some because there are some really good matches i want to talk about any other thoughts on the meta um what we might see uh paint that word picture if you will before we i would imagine qualifying. this is going to be something similar I don't think this is going to be anything new. Unfortunately, I don't think dives, you know, there's a lot of pieces of dive that have been eliminated. Um, I, I do think there are some teams in this specific hero pool that we've kind of established as dive teams, or at least like have kind of uh, put their ballot in the box of being like a dive kind of uh, identified, identifiable team. Sure. What else do they have? That's, that's kind of what I'm looking at. What, what do you do? Ha ha. I get it. Pun unintentional what else can vancouver do you know what what else is defiant necessarily going to be good at because again one of the the criticisms even before hero pools was their kind of like reaper teleport in aggression seemed very telegraphed and seemed very forced so when we've seen them succeed it's been more on those dive heroes what else are they going to find success hmm. with if if able to right I think that's a big narrative point throughout this week. Again, Dallas in the same way. Yes, last week they didn't really play dive, but I think it'll be another fun example of how flexible Decay can be because he's probably going to find a hero and just continue showing you why he is worth all of the money in the world. That Those are just kind of like narrative points that hopefully people will, uh, will enjoy keeping track of. Nice. Yeah. It's it's weird. Like it, I feel like I have, I have. Uh, it's not lag because, like these forecasts, are more like a year in, in advance. Like for instance, mm -hmm. SBB dropping off. I was high on that after season one. <laughs> like, 
Decay, like I, I just saw a tweet of mine like from 2018, July 31st. Decay turns ed, uh, 18 at the end of February. He's the hottest free agent in my mind and he's been doing uh, very well for a while now since at least Ape Apex Season 4. Yes. He vibes like Prophet and Fledder and I predict he will be the next in line. Now, that wasn't true because, of course, like Hyperflex, um, people are probably, you would name ahead of him uh, last season, at least, is like uh, Sinatra, even though Hyper Hyperflex probably doesn't apply to him, Rascal more like, um, even though he was not really a new uh, discovery. Hmm. Did, have, did we have a Hyperflex that just recently come up? I don't think so. Maybe he is the next in line. Maybe he is the the next sighting of I'd the unicorn that can do it all and just can do it all super well, like incredibly well. Last season, it depends on like the qualifications. I think there are some people I would not be one of those people, but I think in particular for last season, there are a select few people who probably would say Hawksall, but I think that a that's not true, and b that's kind of like already been found to like have some sort of legs to stand on if you're gonna you know frame it that way because of his past um but in particular of last year i can't think of anybody off the top of my head i'm I, i'm not yeah. sold on it but um there are there are some players especially this year that have some some uh some votes yep okay so i saw a name in chat that name. I think you're attaching to yeah 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 it, yeah. it has to be Asta, right yeah yeah i would agree like Glista, I don't think Glista has shown to be not what, yet at least. He looks no, great. No. Yeah. But not not in the same ways. Like no. these are players that are completely devoid, not necessarily of role, but like the sub roles within DPS. Mm. Like they mm. can do and transfer and play more passive, play more aggressive. Um, I think Fitz probably could fit that bill as well. I think Doha probably Fitz should Fitz? be able to. Yeah. <laughs> um I, I think there are quite a few. There, there's a nice uh, graduating class of, of this year that uh, will, will probably be uh, pushed into that kind of uh, accolade, that well, into that level of play. Maybe, maybe that just means next year we will see Glista and Fi uh, Lip just pop absolutely off. Because maybe. what I thought Glista could be is what DK is now. Mm. The nuts McCree aim, the nuts like uh, reaction time heavy carry potential and whatnot mm. that is theoretically glister but of, co of course like getting accustomed to a new like not everyone hits like a meteor a meteor right like yeah. immediately in uh in overwatch league even though quite a few did like they're not bad they're just not these transcendental talent we know they could be 100 percent. i mean there's overwatch players that never really hit but then like it was the right circumstance for them to kind of become what they were Right. Um, NA in particular, like had a really good kind of upbringing through Apex Challengers and was always good, whereas other people in that same category looked good against their peers, but didn't really pop until they got on that stage and was like, oh, OK, we 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 get it now. Corey, another one of those people that, yeah, did well for himself in contenders, but I don't think you could compare some of his contenders performances to what he's been doing on the Overwatch League stage, right? Like there are some people sure. like this is saying that are going to hit immediately and just pop off. And then there's a lip Lip played for blossom. Some like mid mid pack, like contenders team. Yeah. And now he's being touted as one of the, the rookie, you know, candidates for rookie of the year. It also goes to show, I team. think something that's really <laughs> unique to Overwatch um, is that there's, the ability for one player to be outstanding and to be overshadowed by, I don't want to say mediocre or bad players, but players who are not as outstanding as them can really hide talent. And like that, that yes. I think speaks yes. to uh, the quality of coaching, um, the quality of scouting. And uh, it's, it's not, it's not easy. It's really, it's really difficult. And even then you go and do research on lip exactly like you say, a, a mm. mid table team, how can they be, like it's it almost becomes a um just like a, a bad faith argument to begin with to be to go yeah. oh because they did place this way or you know i think we've probably seen some players and uh, you know me i can never name them off the top of my head you know on top tier teams who 
uh, you know, once they're in Overwatch League and they're away from their top tier team, don't uh, perform as well. Don't perform. Yeah. Yep. So the Houston Outlaws are going to rematch against the Boston Uprising, which is a rematch that we had from uh, week two. Boston won in five maps. It's their only win for the season. If you take a look at the standings here, you can see the Uprising are one in five. The Outlaws are two in six. The Uprising have a 25% map win percentage, whereas the Outlaws have a 37.5% map uh, percent win percentage. So, Joe, um, I don't know, man. Like, uh, break it down for me here. Is this something that uh, you think that the Houston Outlaws have kind of sufficiently bounced back to kind of not be the... I don't want to say they're a meme, but they were definitely um, people who were very pro uh, Houston, I would say, Mm. or sorry, very anti Houston uh, were very quick to put them as the worst team in the league. And they had to kind of claw out from there. Do you think they fall? They've clawed their way out at this point. I would say so. I would say that with their recent performances, they've, they've looked strong enough to, to, kind of remove themselves from at least the the absolute bottom. Um, and, and if anything, I think they've kind of stratified themselves past like some of the worst teams in the league, um, at least in my assumption. I think Hero Pools definitely skews that um, one way or the other, depending on the week. I think each week, it you know, the, the strength of teams changed depending on, you know, what identity and what they've found success with. Um, so obviously in any week that uh, Dive looks to be uh, a potential candidate for uh, for being played i think houston definitely shoots up in the rankings but in terms of an average of what i can like conceivably kind of run through my head i think houston is is like a they feel right and and this is a very feeling argument they feel like a mid pack maybe slightly below mid team they can do a lot of things really really well and they have some glaring weaknesses and in my summation i think that's that's their front line I think Muma would like to do anything but play Reinhardt. And that's kind so of the we only... <laughs> would like Muma to play sure. anything other than Reinhardt? I, that's the only worry that I have for that particular match. And that's even reaching. Um, mm-hmm. if, if you were to ask me, you know, oh, how does Boston find a victory here? It would have to be trying to abuse that particular kind of head-to-head matchup. And again, I don't like viewing the game like specifically head-to-head, but if there was a way to kind of like make him uncomfortable and kind of like force errors out of him, maybe that's a way that they could find a, a, a kind of a path to victory. But even then, like all signs point at Houston here, I think they have stratified themselves, you know, at least outside of the bottom five teams. Um, and I, I think they're, they're doing well for themselves. They're trending upwards. Obviously hero pools is, is definitely thrown a monkey wrench into a lot of people's plans, but I, I think they're, they're a well-built team for the most part. And we're always going to kind of, ramp up and you know as the season progresses, and i think you're seeing that joe i'm gonna hold you to this though and i'm gonna say who are your bottom five teams then so you have boston. Uh, okay 20 boston um not high on the justice justice mayhem yeah mm-hmm. i can i would i would say Defiance. toronto probably next for me um and again not in any particular order i think they could probably interchange throughout sure. the weeks but sure. maybe not boston though um Boston, Justice, Defiant, Mayhem, probably as as a close four and five. It's tough, dude. I, like, yeah, I but it's getting there, right? It's, like it's debatable if Houston's part of them, right? I don't think so. They, they might be to, like a 15, 16 team right now. Maybe. I it's it's tough because I really don't know where to put Chengdu. And that hurts my little heart <laughs> even like thinking say, of that. Yeah. But I'm like, if you put Especially Chengdu in Atlantic, said he was wrong, right? I mean, that less less of a problem. But I don't know. I don't know what happens if you move some of those Chinese teams over, and and how do they play? That's that's what makes this difficult. It could be. I'd put Uprising uh, there for sure. I think I do put Justice there for sure. Maybe even London. I think I put Defiant. There, I know people aren't gonna like that, but I do put Defiant there. I do, yeah, that Defiant for sure. Um, I, I, I think there's like only London so much Houston you can are, do to argue that a three-two team is worse than a two-six team. 
Right. Yeah, yeah, right. And, and that's and I think we should probably sure. we should probably scope this for a second and say this is not like right now this week who are the best teams based on how they're performing kind of thing. It's this yeah. is like if we all of a sudden fast forward to the end of the season based on the first 10 weeks of uh play, who do you where do you think these teams land at the end of it? And I think that mm. you're right that Houston lands there but right now it's really hard to justify except to say that i also think that houston is just kind of especially the first four weeks really underperformed yeah i would agree with that i also would i think i would separate a lot of the early games in the season pre-hero pools i think the like the game is completely changed i think we should start tallying wins and losses based on when hero pools hit and i think that definitely skews houston in a much more positive light whereas they started the season ill and and again that a lot of teams could could have that argument cool. and, and a lot of them you know could could write off some losses with that as well but i i think maybe they didn't they weren't prepared for that in particular it, it's it's hard to exactly tell but i th- i think it would be fair to argue for the league entirely to start counting at hero pools inception and then go from there and i think i think the debate is a little little bit closer and i think people um would it would would be a little bit more reasonable to the idea yeah. that uh London and, and Houston might be closer than what it what it what it what it, what it seems on paper. Yeah. I uh yeah. I get it though, but it is it is kind of one of those things where we have to uh we do have to okay, let's put our money where the where our mouth is, right? Um yeah. it's uh no worries, Eric. Thank you. Um the it's tough. I it's kind of like one of those I I believe in Houston. I think we've seen enough like good things from them that they should they should end up there. Um mm. let's talk about Boston though. Yiska, do you have any hope for Boston? I think at this point, like I, assuming that they can't make they probably can't make any like signings. They just lost Mufin. Um I I don't know. I don't think I I don't like they were decidedly the worst team in the league. And then they had another Black Swan event. And now it's like, I, I don't know, like this team, hopefully it just opens them up. Because like for those that had really tough times in their life, you sometimes realize like if it gets so bad that you break, that's where you you're not bound to your former coding anymore. Yeah. You can just freely like do whatever you want. So this is a tough situation. I would even prefer them to Chengdu it up fully. Just play to your strength, to the players you have left on that roster. Just throw mud and see what sticks. Um, yep. I'm, I don't think it will help them against uh, Houston, even though that's, a, that's one of the you know, lower ranking uh, opponents. Um, I will also say, like I predicted, for instance, Houston to win last last week against Paris, and I think if I look at the those games and think through, I think we were mostly right. We just didn't uh, incorporate just how amazing uh, Paris coaching staff is in making these mm. micro adjustments and like, how, where did Nico's doom come from? That is insane, like. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember tweeting like yeah, after bent first over map, on Twitter like, after that one, huh? Just set yourself up. I mean, technically I was right, but practically I really wasn't right. Like I tweeted, um, uh, Paris is mirroring Doom. That means game one, uh, map one is over. And I thought, okay, they're not going to run Nico after this because he's just getting ultra clapped by Blase. Actually, Nico popped off and was probably the better performing doom on um, yeah weirdly enough on that week so um i i think we should sort of value that and keep that in mind when evaluating houston they i mean they didn't look great uh, like transcendental against paris and i would argue that it wasn't that close but that's still a team that can depending on the meta can even like depending on the hero reports for instance the week before i think they were one of the teams with the best read 
uh, they had a good read th last week again, so catching them off guard in that regard is probably very hard. And then um, also just like their individual skill on some picks, if they can t tinker a composition towards that or the meta, like the strongest comp thoughts towards that will allow them to punch up. But for this match, they don't need that. So it's just Boston is boomed and uh, this is safe 70% Houston. Yeah, to your point, I, I would like to see what the hype has been around with Color Hex. It seems like every time we mention his name, um, it, regardless of any kind of in-house memes, um, there is some sort of like positive remark like, oh, well, you know, Color Hex hasn't played like the heroes that he's good at. It's like, OK, what are those heroes and why don't we actually put him forward and actually give him the reins? Mm. We're seeing success. We've seen success throughout the league and it's short exception, to be fair. If you actually give a player what you know what heroes that work for them you can cobble together some sort of success i don't know what that is yet i still have no idea what color hex is like not on the team for i think that's way too like aggressive but where where is the, where's the positives here he's he's a good player he's again he's one of those those players that yesco will chalk up as as serviceable and, and fine but why why is he maintained on this roster for so long what what about him is is going to succeed and why don't you at least showcase that I, I'd like to, I'd like to see Color Hex take the reins and and try something different, like to to what you just said. You know, maybe it up. Jeez, or something like that. Sure, right? if yeah. if that's what Color Hex is known for and that's what he came from Australia playing, put him on those compositions. And again, like I'm asking the Boston coaching staff to just come up with stuff on the fly, and and that's completely unfair. But I think that has to kind of be the strategy moving forward because whatever is whatever you're doing now isn't working, and the more you keep putting this off, the harder it is going to be to transition. So I think I, in my, in my assumption, gun to head, I think you have to, you have to break now and deviate. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the odds portal has them at 68% uh, Houston allies. So hey, you guys are, you agree with the odds this time for once. Yeah. I think there'll be a few games that, uh, I can already foresee that we won't necessarily agree on, but for the most part, we, at least this week, I think I can't disagree with a lot of, them. yeah, it's good. I, I think that's all right. Well, let's, let's talk. There's another match I wanted to talk about and uh, we're going to call this one, the match against mediocrity. And that's the Washington justice and the Dallas fuel. Um, both win percentage, second lowest in the overwatch league. Um, it, it, with their, sorry, I, I skipped a line, uh, Washington justice, Dallas view, both struggling to stay out of the bottom. We just discussed that they're probably in our bottom fives to some extent, um, right now as they face off this week, uh, yes, Do you think any of these teams, um, have what it takes to be a mid table team or have you written them off as the, uh, that kind of those bottom five, uh, teams at this point? Mm, I think the fuel has way more potential to to be that after last week, uh, beating the Valiant, of course. You know the vibes, right? Like two coaches, Valiant, peace. Um, but they still like those those their DPS line is cracked, and I think the fact that it's two players as well, yes, uh, already elevates them. Yeah. It elevates them past the Washington Justice. They have a wider roster um, with more opportunities there. They, um, they I, I think there's also like if if a team is able to make midseason moves, it's those two though. I think so. We'll see how that develops. But yeah, generally, like after last week, I think we have to consider that it's probably going to be the fuel that long term just by the sheer like just willpower of the strength DPS. alone yep yes yeah, it's, it's cr like everyone else just needs to be serviceable in order to yep. serviceable or even mediocre is fine like and i think um, and it, that's like the, the the mainstay of that that team that's that's the kind of the feeling is yeah. that you have a very strong dps line and i think that lends itself to doing you know a lot of good for you in hero pools and everybody else just kind of does their job. Okay. Ish. Mm -hmm. And even then, like you have two incredibly good 
DPS players, the fuel will probably do well enough for themselves to, to again, stratify themselves out of the bottom five, probably ahead of Houston. So I, I do need to say this, though, because, I mean, we, we kind of talked about the pop-off potential of the DPS, but we, and, and I would say probably consistently so, trend, and I think under, or, or I don't want to say undervalue, we downplay Corey and Stratus. Uh, just overall, compared to, I would say, like, general community sentiment, I think generally the community is a lot higher on those two. Hanzo May back in, which is kind of definitely a, a community favorite. Uh, in which they feel that that's when the justice look the best. Do either of you guys think that that works in their favor here? Probably not. I think Corey is one of those players that can brute force some wins, but he's going up against pretty stiff composition. And as, as dumb as this argument is like the Dallas are just kind of stronger. They have more firepower to kind of combat that. Whereas, like, if you put London against, you know, Justice, yeah, okay, you've got two relatively good people and then a bunch of, you know, role players fighting against each other. The feeling of both teams are similar, so you're kind of going to get this scrappy kind of one-man army kind of style of game. I think Dallas has enough behind them to kind of push past. I think I still haven't seen a, a world where Justice succeeds without Corey. Um, he is needed in every single way and every hero that he can kind of find success with. There's nothing, there's not like a way that, you know, justice can abuse them. I, I, at least I don't think, yes, I don't think that the Dallas fuels like tank line is all that strong. And I would argue that mm. maybe their support line is among some of the worst, but again, it's overshadowed by how strong this DPS lineup is. And, you know, said this during, you know, uh, power ranking season. This team is going to just kind of be hard carried and, and is going to punch up a lot of the time. And with hero pools, I, I would agree with that even more so. You're going to have scrappy games. What wins scrappy games? Some some absolute stars at DPS. And you saw that last week. They they took what th theoretically was a counter comp and won with it. You only do that, again, theoretically, if you have somebody that's that good at Tracer. Yeah. So I, th I think that is is as well. I think that's evidence enough to support kind of where I'm where I'm at with fuel. The Dallas fuel, though, it is worth being said they do have a 31.3 percent map win rate percentage, which is the second lowest in the Overwatch League. Um, they haven't. I would say probably last week was probably their best week that we've seen them so oh, yeah, far. Oh, definitely. We definitely saw some like sparks of excitement when we saw Decay against the Shock in week uh, one, mm -hmm. I want to say it was. And um, we've seen, uh, I think, Yiska, you were the one praising Gamsu on Monday um, as playing relatively well. Uh, do you, like, are you, is this, is this a team that can actually meaningfully improve? Um, yeah, I'm not sure intrinsically if that's the case. There's, of course, like factors as coaching staff changes. That's probably the biggest multiplier. Um, or divisor, you know, depending on what you th think is going on there. Uh, is it divider? It, it, we're, we're multiplier, divider. Is that how, well, how yeah, it's called? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so. I th I think like definitely they have uh, positions that could need some improving. There's also some promising agents on the market, so it's not impossible. Um, there are deals on the market that allow like this team to work, and that will be interesting. Like I, I are think there are deals in to particular? be particular. Yes, yes, but I don't know who they would trade for. So, um, but yeah, theoretically, like the season's definitely not over for the, the fuel. Um, I also think just like it's it's a crying shame if someone like Decay plays and isn't in a at least middle tier team that's playing for play ins or has mm. to even fear yes. not getting into play ins. Yes. And um, yeah, we'll we'll see. But yeah, I think there's. Definitely, they have the groundworks with with their DPS line, and then mm. if if there's more, then we yeah. we return to an interesting topic because John kind of uh, 
pulled a pulled a light switch on in my brain when we were talking about like the colorless players and, and decay uh, transitions into this point uh, beautifully. What really marks in my mind a fantastic kind of colorless player is having like resounding success on a mediocre team. You look at Fleta, you look at Libero, you look at what decay can become. They've all played for probably be, you know relatively bad teams and looked much higher than what their team was capable of. Corey, another one of those people. Glisser, another one of those people. That's, in my mind, a mark of a fantastic player. Now, they could just be, you know, a, a giant personality getting all the resources and dominating the team. That very well could be the case. But I think, on average, that's not the case. And I think that that's a good, a good badge to kind of give somebody and say, you, you could be a star because what you're doing on a team that feasibly can't give you the best resources you would do so much better. Like if you put Decay on Shock, think about how sick that would be. But Decay mm-hmm. on Vancouver, think about how sick that would be. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a it's a it's a thing to keep your eye on. Let's say. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I totally agree. What what? So uh, sorry, we're we're kind of fighting for time a little bit here. Um. Sure. So all three of us in agreement. Dallas Fuel here. Yes. Yes. Against Justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <sighs> definitely. Um, odds have them at fifty-three in favor of Dallas Fuel. So a close one. So bit, we'll see. Uh, Joe, man, you're gonna love this. We're checking in on China a little bit. Oh yeah. Uh, Chinese team relatively close in rankings, especially if you put uh, take Sh- or put Shanghai in their own tier. Um, mm-hmm. We've seen these teams now for a few weeks how do you feel the chinese teams are stacking up against each other um like if you could give me like a ranking like one through four probably shanghai number oh, one it's so I hard say. but yeah guangzhou it seems like a weird like at least two-way tie right i think the spark and the charge are at least tied and arguably i think there's there's a, a giant argument to give chung do like a, a a weird edge in like they're kind of like at the they're table they're not at being held at gunpoint. I would say I would I would put it as a three way tie, but I also would agree with somebody saying, "Not that's not the case." Ch- China and the spring goes. <laughs> I would I would give them a three way tie. I think they all kind of trade games, and that's what we've seen so far. I think Chengdu is going to be entirely inconsistent. I think that's kind of their mo, and hero pools definitely don't play into that that well. Um, there mm-hmm. are some weeks they're going to look transcendental, and there are some weeks they're just going to completely bottom out. Uh, more so than any other team in the league, I would put my money on. Like, if you want to gun to head, I think that's the team that is going to possibly go from having an argument to beating Vancouver to losing to the charge. You beat one of the better teams that everybody just keeps touting, and you could lose to, you know, Houston the next week. Yeah, they're, they're all over the place. So it's, it's tough. But I think, uh, like, if you were to play 100 games, I think they would all probably be at least fairly close. T E T T yep. is what you're saying right now. Too early to tell. Yeah, in a way, sure. but I don't I, know that I'll ever know. That's the thing. I'm going to need you to at some yeah. point. And here's the, I just want to like, <laughs> I, I want to walk this back for a second. I want the listeners to understand the question that was asked. I said, Shanghai is probably on a tier of their own. Sure. Rank for me one through four. It's one Shanghai. And then I two, two, literally two. just Shanghai in a tie. Yeah. Fair it's enough. tough. That might be the, it, the show. The show title: Shanghai in a tie. I like it. I um, they they're all trading games. They they feel at least relatively different. At least hunters do. Whereas Spark and Charge feel kind of samey. Um, I like Nero. I think right. Godsby's definitely having a higher performance, but there's nothing to really differentiate at least yet. Um, and I don't know that 28 games is going to be enough either. I'd like to see them play outside of that. Uh, what? Get him. We're waking up. Get him. Drag him. <coughs> We're waking up. Drag him, King. Sorry, Joe. Jeez. Just had to go for the three way tie, huh? Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to say otherwise, but. I know. I that's just, the thing. That's, I, I have mad respect because I would know you wouldn't put it in a three way tie if you didn't feel like it was actually a three way tie. Yeah, it's, but, it's just what I feel. Oh, I man. Know. If there was anything else Jeez. I could grasp onto, I would, but China's kind of dull. They're All just right. back and forth. We're, we're going to keep an eye on China, though. We're starting to finally see 
uh, these teams play and you know, all of them have played all the Chinese teams have played uh, only four matches compared to um, a lot of the leagues, six to eight. So, um, you know, it's a little, it's a little bit behind here. We're still gauging them. Fine. Yeah. Let's go to the match of the week though. Uh, and that's going to be the Philadelphia fusion versus the Atlanta rain. Uh, fusion come in six and one point seven four one map win percentage. The Atlanta rain come in at three and one point seven six nine. The uh, best map win rate percentage outside of the Soul Dynasty, but they've only played two matches. So, um, and to be fair, Atlanta's only played four, but. Outside of, I think, a surprising um, 1-3 loss to Paris, uh, the Atlanta Reign have looked pretty good. Philadelphia Fusion, I think same thing, right? They've been, at at the very least, you can say that they've been relatively consistent with their results. Mm. So, with that in mind, who do you think wins and why? This yeah. Is, oh, by the way, we should go through the odds here for a second. Sixty-six percent Philadelphia fusion on this one. It's so rough. I mean, I I'd, I'd also not like Can to do odds for this one. one more time? Yeah, this one's hard. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it really like I think the determining factor in this game match is, of course, like what the hero yeah will what, actually what the determines the matter to be. Um, it's very likely to be decided based on that. We didn't see mm. Hisu off of Reaper really at all mm. last week, right? Yeah. I mean, then he'll probably just not play and we see Ivy back and, um, I mean, depending I don't on even know. Like, the project, I don't, yeah, I just... projectile situations, right? Like, um, the only thing that we have, uh, could make us doubt Atlanta is of course like way back now, like over a month back, the loss against Paris Eternal. Yeah. Um yeah, it's it's really hard to to tell. Um will it will it go down in a DPS slap fight? In that f- case, uh that will be an amazing match, by the way. Uh oh, yeah. between these the DPS case. lines with hmm. yo, who has the 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 edge here, Joe, in that regard. In terms of that, DPS? Yeah, I mean, okay. It de- entirely depends on uh what kind of heroes we're playing. But let's say sure. these are both twelve roster or twelve yeah. player rosters too. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. Oof. I mean, Philly kind of has an argument in terms of like depth where they can field a lot of different things and they it it won't matter exactly, at least now with Hisu becoming of age. Um what the meta is in terms of dps they should be able to have somebody play it whereas atlanta you have like two players who you would assume are the go-to and then you have like baby Bay and sharp who's just like they're they're fine and they're good and they have a role within this team but are they and are they strong enough to compete with what kind of power that philly has and in the depth that it has i think in the scale argument i'd have to say philly but i think if you were to say field the two best DPS lineups from both teams, I think they're pretty even. Um, and again, I agree that uh, it depends on what's played. And that's, that's why I feel like it's not about, it's not about the DPS. It's about, I, and again, like, haha, I, I'm going to beat this like a, it's a tie. something. Just call it a tie. Uh, I know it's not, a, it's a not tie. a tie. They're I think tie. Atlanta, I think Atlanta wins. Ooh. I think Atlanta has shown to be cohesive on heroes that I think are going to see a lot of play. I think the Rhine Sigma, the Rhine Erisa, stuff like that, they seem to be super comfortable with. I think DPS-wise, they can match them well. Support, again, like the head-to-head argument is always kind of like annoying and old, but in these close matchups, eh, I, I, I give the, the edge to Atlanta. Small, but I, I give them like a 5% edge. I like, I like the, what we've seen so far in heroes that I predict to be meta staples, at least this week. I think, I think that might put them, put them over. 
Yiska, where do you land? It's so hot. Um, I think I'll go Philly, actually. Um, I think they 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 figured out more what their core would wants to be like on all the other positions. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that gives them some stability. I think you want to be flexible in DPS. Um, I, have, I have a counter. Finish with your okay. point. I'll, yeah. I'll counter you. Um, and I, I th- it's, it's hard. Like, it's a weird position where we see baby bay start so much. Yeah. And just like from his performances, you like against, uh, pretty much everyone else, but Paris, you couldn't disagree against Paris, which was the only test really. Mm-hmm. He looked bad. So is the my question is if you feel Baby Bay, how is he holding up his own against uh, DPS players uh, that like the caliber that we know the fusion to be able to field? So, sure. um, of course, the entire synergy between them had a lot to do with it there, and um, it's it's such a t- like at best it's a fifty five uh, forty five. Yeah. Uh, match war any of those teams and that doesn't mean it necessarily ends up being close because like depending on me- how the match that falls what their meta read is who they scrim blah 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 this might be a blowout but um yeah i i think the the pre odds of this happening are pretty close right the, my uh, big go ahead, go ahead. The big thing that swings me in the opposite direction is that hero pools seem to be defined on who just kind of sticks to their guns, right? And, and doesn't, isn't forfeiting practice. We've mm-hmm. seen Philly, especially against Paris, look a little shaky. Granted, that was weeks ago. But if we're going to bring up some of Atlanta's mistakes, I think it'd be fair to also give that to Philly and say, have you figured out how to think of hero pools? Whereas I think Atlanta has, I think I would chalk up Atlanta's loss. I believe it was to Paris um, to a lot of like rookie nerves issues. I think Hawk came in, didn't look particularly great. Again, rookie on stage. You're going to get those performances now that we're in week 10, even though it's kind of week eight and we're playing from home. I think a lot of those go away and I, I like Atlanta more here. I really think that they've identified what they want to do. I think they're here. This hero pool in particular lends itself to them finding some sort of success i don't think (laughs) it's so funny i don't think that uh the fusion have the online gaming experience (laughs) because other players were too good so they played atlanta and korea for so long uh but jokes aside uh (laughs) you gotta factor those in man you gotta get the baby bay treatment in um yeah i i do i personally i go with fusion here because when in doubt i i just choose carpe you just have to choose carpet. Not again, yeah. Not a just like not a bad choice. Or you gotta choose Ursta, right? Like that's also it's not a, bad a and choice. B right now. Uh, like, true. Ah man, I don't know if a? I'm ready to live in a world where I choose Ursta over Carpe. Also, I don't know if very I'm ready for that world yet. That might be we. That might very well be the world. Oh, we that world. That, that world's been existent. I don't yeah. know if that's the world we live in. It probably very well could be. I'm just not ready to live in it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, the one thing actually, now that I, I look at like the full week, I think now I kind of want to go back to Atlanta for the more reason that of course, Philly is a double week and it's Uh, not an easy one. Yeah. They play Mm. Paris and they play Atlanta. Whereas Atlanta just plays. And it's worse because they first play. Yes. They play Saturday. They play Paris. So it's all on the table for the fusion. Uh, so for, sorry, for Atlanta. And the question is, can they then pivot if it was required? They don't have to give away their cards. So, if they think yeah. that is superior, right? Yep. Now it's hard to make adjustments uh, a day before. And borderline that impossible at least gives in some, you some sort of pre- preparation, That's though. Good. Yes. That's a good point. So, um, so I, I do have to ask you this then. If, if Philadelphia fusion win both matches this week hypothetically if they do does that make them the best team in the league 
given yes. that we haven't given that we haven't seen Seoul more than two matches. Both Seoul and Vancouver, we've only seen twice. Yes. So let's just remove that them from that conversation of the teams that have played. Does that make them the number one team in the league? Yiska says yes. Say so. I, I, or is it I would say it's kind tie? of unfair. No, I, I would say that it's kind of unfair to remove those two teams. I, I see the point. I would argue that it's on the strength of the wins. And, and yes, Philly, if they do have a 2-0 weekend, these are strong teams, but do they look strong? That's what I'm looking at. That's, that's how I, I'm judging these teams. I looked at Seoul and I said, those were dominant victories. They looked way ahead of everybody else in terms of the meta last or when last they played. I sure. can't even remember when last they played. They looked very strong. If Philly can show that performance, then I would love to give them that nod. And they have a very you know respectable um, argument to be made as the top team. I think it's less on terms of just how much a team has played, because again, in, in, a, in a perfect world, all of these teams would have played six or seven games, but because of, you know, the situation with COVID and whatnot, we haven't been able to see that. I think if they did look strong and they did look kind of, you know, transcendental, then yeah, hundred percent. But if they come out, they drop some maps, then I would say no. Hmm. I think short of like a really, I would say they would need a clean win against Paris. Not, not like a, they don't have to three Oh them, but just, just clean. And then I think a close one against Atlanta, that one can be a little messy and a little sloppy. I think that that is, uh, and still walk away with the win. I think that they're, they're number one. I think, I think that's going to do it. All right. I want, I want to go through just, uh, just pick really quick. So we're not analyzing these games at all. We're just going to pick, going to pick, uh, our favorites. All right. Sure. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Here we go. Ready? Number one, Philadelphia Fusion, Paris, uh, Eternal. Joe. Philly. Yiska. Philly. Same for me. Um, we did, we already did Outlaws, Boston. We already did Justice, Fuel. Let's go. This is a surprising one. Houston Outlaws versus Toronto Defiant. This one has Defiant 63% favored. Joe. Houston. Yiska. Houston. Houston. All right. Um, and then we have Shock Gladiators. Probably one that could have been close for a match of the week here. Mm. 66 in favor of Shock. Who do you pick? Symbolic week, dude. Gladiators. It could go either way. I'm going to say Shock. All right. <laughs> this week is sick, dude. Like, yeah, it's not bad. Don't lie. It's not it's bad. It's a good week. That's let's a good go, week. Let's it's go to possibly the, the best week all year. Let's, let's go to the Asia matches. Asia matches, we have the uh, Hangzhou Spark versus Chengdu. 58% Hangzhou. Joe. I'll say Spark. All right. Yiska. Same, yeah. And then we have the Vancouver Titans versus Guangzhou charge 73% Vancouver. Yiska. Vancouver. Joe. I'm saying Chang though. What? No, no, Guangzhou. Wait, 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 wait. We're on we're, we're Guangzhou. Guangzhou. Oh, uh, Guangzhou. I'm sorry. <laughs> this, this guy's such Excuse a shut <laughs> analyst. He goes like, like All right. Uh, I just heard Titans. I was just like, all right, I guess the, I gotta say it. The justice against the fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Vancouver. Okay. But uh, I'm already mad for the next one. Oh, yeah, you <laughs> should it. You should be. All right, yeah, so uh, Titans versus Chengdu, 75% Titans. Joe, you're going Chengdu here. Yeah, I'm going to say Chengdu. <sighs> Are we just hotboxing farts at the moment? Like, what's going on? <laughs> this is that's a ridiculous I thing. Can't, I, I'm not allowed to explain. Ridiculous. I'm just saying hunters. I cannot believe that. That's what you get. This is... You just have to suffer. <laughs> this is... Oh, my God. Of course, Titans. Okay. And last one. Uh, Shanghai Dragons versus Guangzhou Charge. 73% Dragons. Yiska. Uh, Dragons. Dragons. Easy. Yeah. Easy. All right. 
that's going to do it for episode 90. I, man, I, I think we could talk a lot about those different matches. We just are going long. We talked yeah. a lot about uh, matches in teams this week. Yeah. And so... How, how kind of Joe to send me off the episode with an experience that only is rivaled in depression by an NDMA crash? Like, come on, bro. Like, <laughs> you know, you just gotta tune in the next episode. It's, it's the cliffhanger. Oh god. True. Write it down somewhere. And, like, bury it, and then we we like. Well, time I, I wanna, it, Yeah. Or send it to me right now. How you how you think that's possible? And we open the time capsule if you're right, because that is that is ridiculous. I'm losing my mind. Unreal. Jeez. All right. Well, we're out of here. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Hope you had fun. Went a little extra long this week. Uh, no new patrons or five star reviews. Uh, but thank you for those who continue to support the show. A special thank you to our patron producers, Battle Crab Pin, Lotion, Charlie L, Audio Compass, Pork Chop, Sammy, Kasha67, Coochie Kopi, Salsa Boy, 91, and Shara. Uh, if you like thank the show, you. go to patreon.com slash tactical crouch. We'd love to hang out, chat with you in Croucher's chat, and uh, really appreciate the um, just the support in general. We love you guys. Also, if you want to support the show and you're like, hey, I don't want to give you money. I can't or I don't want to uh, open up your iTunes account and uh, leave a five star iTunes review. Make sure to leave a comment and we'll uh, thank you on the show. Appreciate you a ton. Uh, you can find the show everywhere at Tactical Crouch and on Twitter at Tactical underscore Crouch. We score, we uh, record the show live on Monday and Wednesday at noon Pacific time at twitch.tv slash kick tripod. And you can find me everywhere at kick tripod. Last reminder, spike drop. The new Valorant podcast hosted by uh, myself, Yiska, and Joe, of course, is going to be playing or uh, recording live on Friday right here. Twitch.tv slash kick tripod. Um, it's going to be going to its own YouTube channel. We decided it's going to have its own YouTube channel, and that way we can just put Valorant content on the channel there. Um, I haven't created the channel yet, so I don't know exactly where it is, but uh, I think we're going to be able to get spike drop. So uh, assume that it's going to be there, but you'll just be able to search for spike drop on YouTube and you'll be able to find it if you need to catch it later on. And it'll be on RSS feeds as well. Um, yeah. So other than that, Joe shout outs for the week and where can people find you? As always, uh, it's going to be on the socials at Volamel, V O L A M E L. Um, typical, you know, Newsweek, uh, I've got some articles coming out on GG Recon. Definitely pay attention to uh, that feed. Um, and sometime this month, I don't know when, but um, got some got some more fun kind of uh, projects in the works. Um, all written, of course, but uh, yeah, just uh, be on the lookout. Content cool. uh, is a flowing. Awesome. Jo all right, Yiska, how about you, man? Um, as always, like... Uh... Writing for GG Recon, getting into my Valorant bag now. Um, but we'll see. I'll probably have a preview piece out on all. I, I gotta, I gotta look if I, I'll have time. Otherwise, um, as always, just like my Twitter, add Yiska out. Check that. Uh, if you want to play some Valorant on EU, let me know. I'm looking for players definitely because it's hard to find anyone. Because it I feels like we got less key drops, but um, yeah. Otherwise, oh, thanks yeah. for watching. Um, and if you want to play with uh, myself, and I'll even volunteer Joe a little bit on this. Uh, if you want to play with us on NA, um, just join a discord.me slash Yiska out. We've got a spike drop there, and we're usually posting. If we're looking for people to play with, we post there. So, And other people, not just us, um, but other people in the community. So I uh, would love to play with you. Cool. All right. Ch chat, that's going to do it for us. We're not going to do a post show today because I have to do a bunch of extra editing because the audio dropped out. Uh, well, my whole computer crashed. So um, we're not going to do a post show today, uh, but we'll see you on Monday for another episode. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Bye. Bye.